Hey guys, welcome to the Third Planet Podcast. I'm your host, Danny Benson, and I am again joined by Kamran Schuster. Hello. And today we are going to be reviewing the Millennium uh, Godzilla series in our build up to Kong- Godzilla vs. Kong. So, uh, for this one, we're going to actually start not with Godzilla 2000, but we're going to start with uh, the 1998 Godzilla movie. That's uh, a controversial movie in the kaiju community and i think honestly this is one we might talk about the most in this episode because i might have a surprising view of the movie so but i'll let you start on the start with this one comron sure man uh this dude this was my first godzilla movie i got to see in a theater Uh, i don't know if it was for like other people i just know for me I just grew up watching them on TV and there was so much buildup for this at the time. Like you had Taco Bell commercials, you had like Godzilla marathons where they're like, Hey, hyping up for this movie coming out soon. And I think it was like TriStar that did it, but you, uh, I, I watched it three times in theaters and I never did that for any movie as a kid, but that's also because my parents when I was like, what, six or seven years old when it came out. So uh, they didn't really take me to theaters more than once for like a, a movie, except for this one. And I loved the crap out of it as a kid. I had so much fun with it. I got all the toys that I have so much stuff from this movie. And growing up and watching it again, I like it still. I actually like it a lot. I don't see it as a Godzilla movie anymore, though, personally. And especially, too, because the Japanese actually na- renamed him like Zilla. And I think as a standalone movie, that's if you don't really consider it Godzilla, it honestly works really well. And I think it's actually a really good time, personally. I uh, I completely agree with you. Um, I see, because I, you're, you're a couple years older than me. So when this movie came out, I was probably too little. I vaguely remember the marketing campaign. I remember the Taco Bell commercials and everything, but I didn't really know what it was. Um and it took me a long time to actually see this movie because I would always see it on the shelf in uh, the video store. And finally, one day I rented it just to see what it was all about. And I remember thinking that it was OK. You know, it was a giant monster movie. I never really thought of it as like you were saying, like I never really thought of it as a Godzilla movie. And I always thought of him as like just his own thing or whatever, because I don't think the monster design is OK. It's not Godzilla, though. Definitely not. Not even close. It's uh, like nothing about him besides the nuclear testing, really. Yeah. The lizard. (laughs) But uh, yeah, I I don't think this movie is uh, that bad. I like that it has a lot of practical effects, too. You know, and I I would love to see something like that in the legendary movies where we see the mix of CGI and like actual model buildings being destroyed and up close animatronics and everything. And uh yeah, that's those are some of the things that I, I think the the monster action in this movie is actually paced pretty well too throughout the story. Yeah, and it, I mean it did it definitely came during a transitionary period where uh, visual effects were just really getting started to like a I guess a higher degree because really at the same time it was this and it was also Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace and you're seeing already that mm-hmm. mix there as well, and you could se- tell like the '90s was a weird it was a really weird hybrid era. Because, you know, once you get into the 2000s, like that's when you start seeing the decline of practical effects and uh, a very big like move up in visual pretty much. Yeah. And it, it, it's honestly kind of sad to see that because I really do miss seeing more practical effects on screen. Um, I will say, though, this movie has not aged well, I don't think. And a lot of that is because of just the filmmakers, uh, Roland Emmerich and uh, was it Dean Devlin or something? I think name? so. Yeah. Yeah. It it hasn't aged well. The the acting isn't very good. The characters aren't very good. It's uh yeah, it's just it hasn't aged well. It's yeah, a, I, I still think New York's like that. I think it's exactly like that. <laughs> oh no, I wouldn't doubt that at all, actually. <laughs> I've never been to New York, but from what I hear, probably. Um but as a just a cheesy popcorn monster movie i don't think it's terrible i think it's okay you know 
Yeah, I mean, it's got it's got a good amount of like different variables because you have like massive monster attacks plus French, like a form of French espionage kind of added mm-hmm. in with it. And it was That's just so out of it's so random. It's like it why is. is that even in the movie? There's so many different you have like, oh, it's the local New Yorkers that work with like the news. You've got your American military, you have French secret operatives, you still have the monster itself, and then you have the scientists as well. So you have all these different factions. So in a way too, it's kind of the movie with the most different like factions in any of the monster flicks that we've seen pretty much for yeah and none of them jive together all that well in the oh, movie. And another thing <laughs> and another thing too is that this movie is so desperate to capitalize on jurassic park hype because lost world just came out right before this one i think oh did it yeah i think it wasn't lost world like 97 uh, i'd have to or... double check on it uh, i can check right now though but yeah i wouldn't be surprised yeah because yeah the first jurassic park movie was just insane and then lost world comes and they're like what if we added two not one, but two T Rexes, and they're like, "Dude, that's ins- dude, that's crazy." Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. they literally just added more dinosaurs. That was the biggest difference. Added more dinosaurs and more Jeff Goldblum, which you know, I just a quick tangent on that movie. I don't think that movie's that bad. I like the lo- like maybe it's just my nostalgia goggles on, but I still like the Lost World. I know a lot of people for some reason don't really like that movie. It if. I read the books, so then it, it gave me a much different take on it, and I was like, "Oh, they could have done this," but there's like I, some cool stuff, including. I hear the book. The book's way different than the movie. The books are incredibly different, um, but you yeah. do see uh, at least uh, just Jurassic Park one, three, and Jurassic World all take stuff from the original book easily. Um, you'll you'll mm-hmm. see a lot of stuff there. But uh, I did check; it's ninety seven, and then of course ninety eight Godzilla. So it came a year right after. Yeah, so. Yeah, overall, and the marketing for this movie was great because they didn't show Godzilla at all in the marketing. Uh, yeah, you just saw the foot and everything. the whole time. It was oh yeah, it was always just the, even in the Taco Bell commercial where it's like the Chihuahua is like here lizard, 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 and then you just see the foot and he's like, uh oh, I think I need a bigger box, and you're just like, oh man, that's crazy. I'm gonna go to Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> I, I miss that Chihuahua on the Taco Bell commercials. Everyone today says, "Oh, that's like racially offensive." It's like I'm, I'm Latino, and I thought he was hilarious. Yeah, same. But I was, I was like, it's a fun. Ch- I don't know. It's just a fun it's little just talking a cute dog. Chihuahua man. with like a, a hoodie on. But and then they, it's, see, that's fine. It's like that's terrible. But they, then they put in Beverly Hills Chihuahua after, and you're like, oh, well, okay. But you like, you like this. <laughs> yeah, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, I think we should also talk about the original TriStar Godzilla movie that they were trying to go forward with before this the production on this movie started. And uh, special effects uh, wizard Stan Winston was involved, uh, the guy who did the special effects for, for Jurassic Park. And he uh, came up with this really cool Godzilla design. You could find you could easily find the, the monster design, like Google Stan Winston Godzilla design on the internet and it looks like a modern heisei godzilla isn't it like it kind of looks like a tyrannus it's like a combo of a tyrannosaurus and godzilla a little bit like they look very similar kind of like it, it looks like a more slimline sleeker version of godzilla okay pretty much because i think uh, i actually saw it earlier today i'm not even gonna lie i think i saw that design earlier and i, yeah, I was it's like a- oh what's this yeah, it's different enough to where I could say, like, yeah, it's definitely an updated look, but it still has that look to it. It's like almost a legendary design. Like, you can tell, like, that's Godzilla. And the origin for the movie was, like, there is, like, Atlantis, and Godzilla was the protector of Atlantis. And they do something that, like, uh, there's this other monster that arises called the Griffin, and they do something to wake up this Godzilla, who's this ancient protector of Atlantis, and to fight the monsters and they have this big showdown the godzilla and this other monster the griffin have this big showdown in uh new york and it was supposed to have suit action animatronics and cgi and like the the creature design for the griffin looked really cool like it was all like it it sounded like it could have been a really cool movie if they got that one off the ground dude that sounds amazing i think i mean it's like oh yeah this is a fun little flick and it's like dude if we had that instead that probably would have been because yeah. it, it reminds that sounds like a combo of what would it be like twenty thousand twenty thousand leagues under the sea and then what was that uh kind of gods and monsters movie 
with like Liam Neeson where he's like released the Kraken and whatnot. I don't know. Oh, remember. Clash of the Titans. Yeah, Clash of the Titans. I feel like it's like a combo of all that kind of stuff. You you have yeah. that and it's like a Godzilla movie though. That seems really honestly really cool because it just yeah. gets really mythological there and another different take on him. I love myth the mythological element of uh Godzilla and I think that that would have been a really good movie and uh it's sad that we didn't get that one and that's and this is the one that we got um but like I said like I I like thinking like you were saying like I like thinking that Zilla is just maybe some sort of Godzilla subspecies out there like IDW I think handled him great and that was probably the best yeah best version of of him I've seen for sure yeah because he does because oh yeah and we should talk about the cartoon too the cartoon is the best thing to come out of this movie that cartoon even though it still has that same design feels way more like Godzilla than this than the movie yeah he really he actually yeah he just his mannerisms too just everything about him and what it was on Fox right it was Fox Fox kids with the the X-Men cartoon and everything yeah that was great because they introduced a whole new lineup of original monsters in that and each one were they were honestly really cool designs and ideas where they had specific types of powers or uh they had certain functions because they were designed off of bugs or animals depending like there was bees bats and things like that and then like animals that were like kind of like parasite from superman where they actually siphoned the life out of uh godzilla and other monsters and people Uh, it was really interesting the way they had all these different creations ready to go for the show oh yeah i uh I, I I do think that show is really good. I didn't watch it too much as a kid, but when I got older and I caught a couple episodes uh, that were on for reruns, I was like, this is a fun show. Uh, it's really good. Definitely. And they, yeah. they really do good stuff to tie it into the movie as well. Like they kind of bring some th- certain things back when they bring in uh, some extraterrestrial uh, variants to the, to the show, I will say. I don't want to spoil things people if they want to watch it because there's some yeah actually pretty cool stuff they tie back to and i would they, definitely uh, check this show out over the movie for sure didn't they have plans like i saw the script for the second movie it was pretty much it seems like the show kind of substituted for it but the the second film was going to have that egg come out and see nick totopolis played by uh matthew broderick and it would kind of like be attached to him like that previous one in the show so i think the, the plan for the second movie was going to be he was going to be more heroic fighting another monster. Yeah, the, I read the plot summary for that movie. Um, it sounded pretty good. It sounded like the show pretty much. Like I think that the they used the I the original script for the movie pretty much in the show where they took the idea of them ha- kind of having this Godzilla team that tracks Godzilla and Godzilla's almost their pet. Um they were going to do something like that with the, the second movie, but you know, critic, the movie just was critically not that good and everything. They could have, if they would have been able to do the sequel, they could have saved it by making an excuse saying this Godzilla looks different because like he's evolving or something and made him look more like the original one. Yeah, they could have. That is very true actually. Yeah. But they, I think they were like, ah, let's get the money and run. Let's get out of here. It's not worth it at that pretty point. much. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you know, for a while I thought that was the only American Godzilla movies we were gonna ever get. Um, it was shocking that we still got the 2014 Legendary one after this one. Yeah, it was like what 16 years later or something, but we eventually got it. Yeah. So, okay. uh, like I like we were saying, you know, it's a uh, it's a fun popcorn movie. It's corny. It's uh, kind of a turn your brain off movie. Something good to I think get together with friends and maybe make fun of or something almost like the show era movies, but just keep in mind, it's really not a Godzilla movie. It's a Kaiju movie. For sure. Yeah. So I guess next on the list is Godzilla 2000. This movie. Oh my God. This, I also got to see this in theaters. I was very shocked and surprised. And I was also slightly confused because it was two years after the American one. And I'm like, I don't know where we are. Uh, he looks different than before this movie, but he also looks different than the last movie we just saw. So as like a nine or 10 year old now or eight year old, something around that, I'm like, I don't 
I don't know what's happening, but he looks really cool. <laughs> yeah, I heard that there was like the reason this movie didn't do too well is because first off, people didn't like the 98 one. So they thought this was a sequel because it wasn't marketed very well. And then like the people who did like the 98 one didn't like this movie because they realized it wasn't a sequel. Yeah, and it is different. I mean, it's the start of it's really the start of the, the third Japanese era and it is also a weird change because, you know, we had Showa where they're all kind of, they're still connected. Like you see a lot of connections within a lot of them, but they're, mm -hmm. they can be standalone if you want them to be. Whereas Heisei, everything is fully connected. It's like a, a seven movie arc. This is where it gets really choppy and mm -hmm. you really don't know what movies even tie in together. And there's like, not counting the 98, there's six of them starting with this one and you don't know which ones are one shots and which ones are actually sequels to another. If they're tied at all, it gets really weird. And it, this one though, I, I think it was, I like this one, honestly, probably the most out of all of them, to be honest. It, this one is weird because you can almost watch it as a sequel to Godzilla versus Destroya. Like yeah. it's that, like almost like, Oh, maybe this is Godzilla jr. Um, it's really, there's nothing clear about where this fits into the timeline or anything. Cause it's just, it's just a Godzilla movie. Honestly, this one kind of scared me when I was a kid because I always thought Orga's design was kind of scary. Dude, he's a... They, it's funny because you're, you're so used to Ghidorah and Gigan being the, these alien monsters, Space Godzilla, uh, like all three of them. And then you get this one and for some reason it screams alien over the other ones where you're just like, oh God, it's like from outer space and i don't know it just screams it more i guess just because of the design and it's more of a modern time at this point like we're we've entered the year 2000 now and very much so yeah and i guess this movie if i remember correctly like it starts off there like why is there people are actually confused why godzilla is attacking because mm -hmm. i guess at this point they're not used to him being offensive anymore on to like offensive with humans and the whole thing is he's preparing the earth against orga by destroying orga's power structure like the whole thing is like he siphons power and he's just destroying those in preparation for orga which was honestly really interesting like i think at least in a standalone it had a really cool actual human cast of people uh that are going yeah, around I, doing stuff. I didn't mind the the cast in this movie um what do you think of Godzilla's design? Because this one's radically different than any other design we've ever gotten. It's purple. Like, I mean, it's like the you, you get the purplish spikes and like yeah. purple. Um, I don't know if you'd call it like veins or something like the there's like streaks now on yeah. him instead of and he's green. Purely green. Yeah. Yeah. He's green in this movie. He's not charcoal gray. Um, this is like ultimate Godzilla almost like, a, you know, revamped. This is early. This is sums up early 2000s Godzilla. Yeah. He's also, his spikes are much larger than they were yeah. in previous films. So he's like, vicious he is, looking. Uh, they, yeah. They make him look substantially uh, just larger, meaner, and just ready to do whatever he wants at this point. Yeah. Uh, other than that, like, I, don't, I mean, the movie itself, I think it has a really cool idea the way they bring in the alien and Orca's like first kind of a UFO and then can transform into the monster itself. Uh, and then, yeah, the human story along with the business guy, which I always thought was kind of funny the way that ends yeah. where he's just like, Godzilla! I know, it makes no <laughs> sense so at all, good. but it, it's funny. Um, this movie, though, I surprisingly just don't have any, like, I don't, like it or i and i don't dislike it it if just that makes any sense this just kind of exists to me it, it, i feel like it's a perfect product of its time where you were satisfied with your ending of the heisei era you get 98 so you're taken completely out of the japanese like take of it and then you're put right mm -hmm. back in two years later but it's not where you recognize it because that area that door already closed so you're just kind of like i really don't know where i am here and I don't think the movie does know either, at least in terms of what's going on in it. And it's it kind feels of, like it was yeah. just made as a direct response to the 98 movie. Yeah, honestly. pretty much. I mean, look at the title itself. It's like Godzilla 2000. Like that's so it's just to be like name drawing, like you're, you're seeing that. And then pretty much yeah. everything of that time, everything now has that millennium name incorporated into it practically. Pretty much. Um yeah, I think that's all I have to say about this movie. I mean, check it out. It's not 
it's absolutely not required to me. No. It's just, uh, but if it's on or like this one's actually pretty readily available too. It's usually available. This is the one that's usually always on streaming apps and everything. So and the Blu-rays are easy to come by too. Oh yeah, it's always at Target. It's always at you know Best Buy. This is one of the most common Godzilla movies. So. And I will say one thing too. Um, I actually think the American version of this movie is better than the Japanese version, especially when it comes to like Orga's uh, roar and everything, and like some of the a lot of the music too. I guess they're trying to tailor to the American audience now after '98. I'm not really sure. It's just yeah, it's just yeah. a whole confusion. Yeah, they redid a lot of the music. Uh, an American a composer redid a lot of the music for this movie and everything, so it I it comes out a lot better because uh, the original composer didn't do uh this movie i think i think they just reused a couple of his old tracks a couple places and that was it but yeah I, if do you have anything else to say about it comron i mean i think the only reason it holds up for me is because i w- it was like of the millennium era it was the only one i really watched as a kid it was like around this time godzilla was kind of exiting my life for a long time because you know the movies were starting to end and you were getting these other ones but for the most part they weren't being made a big deal in the u.s specifically anymore like it was kind of winding down kind of with that of the popular popularity decline of the 98 film so uh yeah i just i think that was like the biggest memory for me and then the rest kind of came in and i watched them when i was a bit older so uh Mm -hmm. that's it but yeah i think it's missable if you really don't need to watch it yeah, I agree. So I guess it takes us to the next one on our list, which is Godzilla versus Megaguirus. I think this one's very, very... I think this is the most underrated Godzilla movie. It's got really cool design, like bug monsters and their origin. Do you know the origin of these monsters? Yeah, they're from uh, Rodan, aren't they? Yeah, they're the yeah, yeah they're, they're Rodan's food became a monster that Godzilla fights. And I... It really makes you think of the idea that Rodan was actually a, a great way of the food chain of stopping this monster from getting too big and it could have yeah. been worse. So Rodan actually saved humanity in that movie, if you think about it. Yeah. But, uh, dude, the the designs for these bugs were crazy because it's like, what do you call them? Like, they're kind of like cicadas or like dragon... I don't know how to describe they're dr- these. They're dragonflies and they call them the Mega Nula, I think. And, and wasn't it they all form one? They just kind of form together to make just Mick Gears himself, if I remember correctly. They I can't all like exactly. They all collect energy and then like pump it into their queen who uh, mm. who wakes up. And then uh, it's a cool monster design. Mega Gears is a great, like, if essays monster arts, you get your shit together and make a Mega Gears <laughs> figure. Mega Gears and Titanosaurus are the two ones that I want the most from uh, from SH Monster Arts. Understandable, understandable. And uh, wasn't this one, if I if I remember correctly, honestly, this is one of the, for me, one of the ones I've seen less than others, but it's one of the ones where the humans actually do a lot of interaction, like actual battles with like these smaller scale bugs until it gets onto the Godzilla level, right? Yeah, there's the human action in this movie is actually really good um, because you get... Uh, there's a scene where one a soldier actually climbs on him while he's swimming and touches him, which is a rare thing that you, you never see anybody touch him in movies. You just imagine it as a kid. That's it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, This movie is also the first one to not be in Canon with the 1954 one. Yeah. It's that's where, that's why this one is so weird. It's just, yeah. Like the continuity is all over the place in this one. You see, what I always did as a kid is I always just like ignored those parts of the movie, and I always just pretended that Godzilla 2000, Godzilla vs. Megaguirus, Godzilla against Mechagodzilla, and Godzilla Tokyo SOS are all in the same canon, because like Godzilla looks so similar in all those movies. So, I mean, this movie does have the same Godzilla suit as Godzilla 2000. So I'm just like, it's it's a sequel. I don't care what yeah, anybody says. But I guess like in terms of connect like canon, they are. Are they actually fully separate? Yeah. Okay. I know that Godzilla against Mechagodzilla is also a direct sequel to the 1954 one. And then Tokyo SOS is the sequel to Godzilla against Mechagodzilla. Those are like Uh, really, I guess when we get to them, but those are the only two that are actually connected in this era, right? Honestly. Yeah. That's, that's the only one, the only ones that got a sequel. Yeah. 
But I, I mean, honestly, I don't, I know you, you have more to say about this one than I do, honestly, because I don't, there's not much I got for this one specifically. It's honestly just a nostalgia thing uh, for me. It's one of the ones I watched a lot as a kid uh, when sci-fi had their stompathons. But uh, this is one you just don't ever see it anywhere, honestly. You don't ever see it on – it's never streaming. Uh, you rarely see a DVD of it anywhere. It's rarely on TV. It's a, really a forgotten Godzilla movie. And I, I can kind of see why, but at the same time, I, you know, I, I enjoy it. And – Hold on, let me look up on uh, the internet right now and who did the music because it's got a new Godzilla theme because somebody else came in and did the music and it stuck around for this movie and Godzilla against Mecha Godzilla and Godzilla. Um, Tokyo SOS. Yes, and it's very very good. It's different okay. than the original one, but it's it's a lot of fun. This let's see who did the music. Uh, all right, I am about to murder this man's name. Mish Mishiro Oshima. Okay. okay. And he, yeah, because it's different than uh who we've had previously, like for pretty much decades, if anything. Like uh, yeah, yeah. So God, I, I keep forgetting the other Godzilla. The Isn't other it, Godzilla. Uh, uh, Ikafube. Isn't yes, Ak- Akira Ikafube. I'm pretty yeah. sure. But oh, let me make sure. I got. Yeah, double name. double check just in case to keep keep our consciences clear. Yes. But I mean, other than that, like I. I don't know if I could recommend this one specifically. Like, I feel like at least if you're wanting to learn about it for science, um, but just to know like why it's kind of more unique and under the, under the rug more so than some others, uh, definitely check it out. Otherwise, like I would say it could kind of be passed up. And if you just kind of want to watch more of the obscure ones, this is definitely under the list of them for sure. I agree. It's, uh, it's, it's not one of the best, but I think that it's good enough that it warrants a watch if you wanted to. It does, again, because the continuity is all over the place. It's not like you got to watch this movie to, to understand another one. It's just uh, it's a fun monster movie. And also, we get the greatest shot ever of Godzilla doing the giant. Like, he leaps forward and does, like, a dive bomb on to Mega Gears because he gets, like, so frustrated with him. Understandable. Yeah. But, dude... I guess do you want to move on to the next one? Yes, the next one holds a very special place in my heart. And I think that it is easily top five Godzilla movies of all time. And it's my top, I say it's probably my second favorite one after Godzilla versus Bi. I think Biolante is my favorite. This one is my second favorite. Dang best Godzilla design, best Mothra design, Godzilla, Mothra, and King Ghidorah, giant monster all out attack. Stupid title. Awful title. Uh, the fan base calls it GMK for short. And usually if you don't, it's funny because like people say GMK, like you're supposed to know what GMK means. If you don't, they're just kind of like, what are you, what are you saying? But it's, it's really interesting because looking at your different fan bases, like, I mean, look, we were kind of polar opposites when it came to the show era. Like we were, you were a fan base of the early era portion and I was a fan base of the late era. And then right. I say is it's of course its own thing. You have a lot of, especially like people that grew up in the nineties and eighties loved those, but. Yeah. Hey, Millenn- is the one we agreed on the most. Cause oh, I easily. think we both love those movies. I think most people can probably agree on it too like that's the hard one to even dispute but when it comes here it, it's also you have movies that there's just key fans of pe- pe- fans that just love key movies like there are fi- mm-hmm. fans of Biolante specifically and then not even Millennium Era fans which honestly I'm, I'm not even sure if there are Millennium Era fans that like that era more than others but mm-hmm. there are just specifically GMK fans where they don't even care about other Godzilla movies. They just like this one. Like this is their movie for some reason. Like it, it's completely different than anything we've seen in this era and in the other two, because it's completely separate. I don't even think it, it doesn't even relate to 54 either. Right. I don't think it, so. this one is in Canon to 54, but it works and it's, it does something really different with everything. And God damn it, I wish we would have gotten a sequel to this movie. This is the one I wish would have gotten a sequel because I love it. I think that it holds up as a movie on its own. It also does something that no other movie does. 
it makes Godzilla the evil monster and Ghidorah the good monster. It yeah. also makes Godzilla for the first and only time larger than Ghidorah, which is so unheard of and so just jarring when you see it. You're like, what? Because you, the only other time you get Ghidorah good is, is something good is because Ghidorah died and they put a mecha version of him out there instead. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> and I know a lot of people don't like this movie because of that, because of how much they changed everything, um, which I, I understand. I just I like that it did something original with the movies. And I guess we should maybe talk about the plot a little bit for this one. Um, the plots of the last ones weren't that important. Uh, but this one, I think we, we should. It's uh, pretty much Godzilla is resurrected by all the angry restless souls of the people who were killed during world war ii in the pacific uh like the dead soldiers and everything so it does a lot of callback to like you know i guess the the japanese imperialism the a lot of the fighting with the americans and everything and because of that you get this evil godzilla with no pupils like the coolest godzilla complete whited eyes that's actually what kind of it made me very uneasy, I think, when I was watching it when I was younger. I think that's why it kind of, as, as a kid, it turned me off a bit. He's a scary Godzilla yeah. in this movie. He's evil looking, and I love it. It's my favorite Godzilla design. I have the SH Monster Arts of this, and uh, they it ends up that to protect Japan against Godzilla, there's they have Mothra and King Ghidorah and Baragon, even though he's not in the title. They're like these ancient guardian monsters of japan so like uh water door is much more of like the mythical dragon in this movie rather than an alien which i yeah. actually don't mind yeah it's the one time Ghidorah is actually from earth and wasn't it each one's a, the guardian of water the guardian of air the guardian of earth yes i think i think that's yeah. what it was yeah that's it and, and i think baragon was earth mothra was water and Ghidorah was air was that what it was or oh yeah that, something that's along it. that line yeah Okay. And I know a lot of people what because in the original script it was supposed to be Varen and Anguirus with Baron. Yeah. Yeah. And I know a lot of people wish that they got that. Um I'm okay with the with the movie that we got though. I mean I, I see why they did it. Like it is kind of you see it's not for necessarily the story. It was just due that they wanted popular names on there and they took the two biggest yeah. ones. And the idea that we could have gotten Anguirus again and very have a good movie with Varen because like I said if people I don't know if uh, people watched before but Varen the Unbelievable uh, his one shot movie is horrendous in, in English and it's horrendous in Japanese it is just it's just horrifying in general I don't watch that's it, why so. he only had a that's why he only had a cameo appearance in Destroy All Monsters I understood after what I was like why is he only in like these shots and then I watched the movie and I'm like well you shouldn't have put him in, in there at all <laughs> don't put him in Destroy All Monsters <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, he just I I would have loved to see Anguirus more, I think, too, because you're you're going off of an era where we didn't have him at all in Heisei and the concepts for him in the final movie were there, but didn't come to fruition either. And then here he kind of has a chance, but then we still don't get it until Final Wars briefly, where he's used as a soccer ball. But like, yeah, you, I, it would have been cool having m more b-list characters or d-list characters be utilized uh for something like this but you know mothra and Ghidorah are very popular and i get why people were happy with that right and i will say too that the human side of the story actually isn't bad i i don't mind the human side this is one of the better human stories i think um and I got it. the special effects in this movie, I think, are the best out of any Godzilla movie. But when it comes to suit action, to CGI, to anything, the fights are really, really good. The sets look great. Great suits and the music. Oh, the music in this movie is one of my favorite Godzilla themes because it's so unique to the rest of them. It's very menacing. Yeah. Yeah. You feel Godzilla's anger through this one. Definitely. Um. I think easily recommended for anyone. Uh, I would say require because it's like a for me personally. I don't like this. This isn't one of my top movies. I think it's just because of the way it rubbed me differently. Uh, but I can still appreciate what it did because it's an original take 
where they wanted to do something new instead of just rehashing something else. They were like, hey, what if we did it like this? And it does work really well. So I would highly recommend it to anyone uh, just seeing another version of these monsters for sure. Oh, yes. And I like Godzilla was I like this Godzilla with a very supernatural twist. Um, like I said, this has this movie has a cliffhanger ending. And man, do I wish we would have gotten a sequel. And this is the one I think could have been really good. Yeah, it's it's weird. Like everything around this time, it's like night, like all these movies never get closure. <laughs> they're just kind of all like they're just they're just randomly there. That's why I think most people, myself included, just kind of forget the millennium era a bit because of just how scattered it is you know i know and it it, it does suck because you know megaguirus godzilla versus megaguirus ended on a cliffhanger and you know gmk ends on a cliffhanger um it it does suck that we didn't get a lot of closure i would at least you know idw if you ever listen to this do a a comic book sequel to this movie like, oh I my would god, love that, that would that. be cool! Yeah, yeah for any of these, Arthur Adams drawing it, or uh, what's the other guy who does the Godzilla books? Matt Reeves. Yeah. Also, you do a '98 sequel. You just do that too. Yeah, why not? Well, we got <laughs> the at least at least for that we got the animated series. Yeah. Or 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 two, they could do the alternate the Ghost of Godzilla movie that was going to be instead of Destroya. That would also be cool. I would I think that actually would be really dope too. This actually, is the now I'm thinking thing of just, to like a Ghost Godzilla that we get. So we should just do a, an episode where it's just a bunch of this is what you guys could do into comics with all these different stories. Yeah, that'd be fun. <laughs> oh, man. So yeah, um highly recommend this. Definitely a must see even though it's not really you know canon into anything else except the 54 one definitely watch it it's a good story it's a nice twist on everything great special effects great fights um yeah it's a really good movie so i haven't so the next one's godzilla against mecha godzilla yeah i've only seen that movie like once when it first came out and that was it it uh so this one surprised me because uh i remember kind of watching everything again and i was showing these movies to my friends but for my i was honestly showing them to myself at the same time because for besides 2000 i barely remember remembered any of them from like when i was a kid so i showed them each of these and each time i was just kind of like man i don't think anyone really cares about most of these besides like gmk for the most part and we didn't really care too much about anything else until this came out and it the concept in it was um, really well utilized and it kind it's of, unique it, it reminds you too of the 98 cartoon as well they kind of do the same thing here where 54 still happens and instead of leaving the body uh they take godzilla's body and turn it into mecha godzilla yeah, and the skeleton of the original godzilla the crazy there's two crazy things about it too one well i guess not crazy but they don't even call him mechagodzilla in this one they call him kiru and this yes, is like Mech- the third iteration of mechagodzilla best and design too this is my so favorite good. mechagodzilla design so good bad really good godzilla design in this movie too i i think i still love the hasty one more just because of the the super mecha like with the jet pack on the back but oh yeah uh, yeah that's like <laughs> That's a different thing. But um, the pilot, if I remember correctly, even has a telekinetic link with the spirit of the original Godzilla that's in the Mecha Godzilla, like in the Mecha itself. That part always really confused me as a kid when I seen it, um, how that how all that worked. Like it made sense that okay, so in the movie Mecha Godzilla goes crazy because it remembers the the like the the AI in its brain picks up Godzilla's DNA and the skeleton that's in it and remembers that it's Godzilla and goes on a rampage. Uh, so that's interesting. But then when it started doing like the connection with the pilot and everything, I was like, this is just getting way too complicated. Uh, it, they got, um, I guess you could say they kind of got mobile suit in there. There was like, yo, we get Gundam now. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. It, this one it's feels like he's the a most, new type. <laughs> out of all this one and the next one, I think to me most feel like an anime godzilla yeah and dude i honestly yeah yeah and the other thing too is you know you get the second godzilla come in and yeah i think originally you know kiru doesn't want to fight him yet and he has to be convinced to go against this godzilla to stop him yeah because it's almost like he's fighting his son yeah 
And overall, like, they do a really good job with this movie. Everyone came out of it. We were all kind of pleasantly surprised. I was like, whoa, this is better than I remember. And the best Godzilla yeah. intro, too, with the lightning striking his spines and he's like just glowing and roaring in like the lightning storm. It reminds you Great a lot shot. of like Ibira Horror of the Deep when he does that whole like uh, they wake him up with the lightning and the sword and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, this one, yeah, greatest Godzilla intro. Um, now I don't really have too much else to say on this movie, though. I say, like, music's, again, really good. It's done by the same guy who did the one in Godzilla vs. Megaguirus. Um, yeah, check it out. It's uh, it's fun. I actually like the second one way more, though, the one that we're going to talk about next. Definitely. I think I would, I guess out of all the Millennium movies, I'd probably recommend this one the most just because it is the first two SOS, and you do get the kind of the AI interaction there where it's still trying to be like, I don't know what I am yet. And I haven't decided whose side I'm on, but yeah, it, it really, I would say at least like out of these six, seven movies, there's like three of them. I would highly recommend like you should probably watch, but yeah. Right. Um, so I, yeah, I guess uh, moving on to Godzilla Tokyo SOS. I think this movie is really good. Yeah, this is a great, cause it's can, it's it's the only one that continues from a previous movie in this yes. era. <laughs> it's a sequel to Godzilla against Mecha Godzilla. This one is actually canon with Mothra too, the original Mothra movie. So you can watch both Godzilla and Mothra uh, to this one. I think actually I, now that I think about it, I think the Godzilla against Mecha Godzilla even references Rodan and everything in it. So it's canon to a lot of the old Showa movies. Yeah, more like yeah, mainly. Just- just the line of one shots uh specifically yeah, yeah. And which would have been cool i really wish we would have gotten more rodan in uh the millennium era but um i think that the ending to this movie is so good yeah and because it's not even just it, they bring back kira of course but now it's a female pilot i believe this time and... well, it was a female pilot last time oh and then it's male pilot this time right i think it's a it's it follows a mechanic on Mecha Godzilla, and then like he's also trying to work with a uh, with the, one of the female pilots and everything. And it's uh, you know Mothra, and Mothra comes in because she yeah. like the the fairies are trying to convince him to return Godzilla's bones to the sea, and they're just like, no, we can't do that, and everything. And it, God, it just leads to one of the best Godzilla endings when you see like the rising sun and the music, and Mecha Godzilla turns like evil again. Well, not even evil. Like it becomes self-aware again, and it takes Godzilla with them into the sea. It's so good. Like really, yeah. watch this movie. Like watch definitely watch the other one too to get the full story. But this one's it's really good. Yeah. It in the name itself just kind of because you're you don't know what's going on anymore at this point. Like we're getting yeah. close to the end of like at least for the for like a decade. You're like, oh, this is the end of Godzilla. And there's only one more movie after this. And you're just like Godzilla Tokyo SOS. And it can, as a kid, I was a little confused because I kept thinking it was, they just retitled the movie because they kept seeing just Godzilla and Mechagodzilla on the cover. And, and then the second movie is like Godzilla and Mechagodzilla on the cover. And I'm like, is this the same, is this the same movie? And then I watched it and I'm like, oh, it's not. But yeah, no, it's, it's so good. And it really stands out because when you really think of the Millennium Era and it, gets really scattered i personally like to think of these two i I like to call them honestly the kira movies i like to think of uh these two as the true uh millennium films there honestly mecha godzilla feels more like the main character in these movies than godzilla um again really good special effects really good fights um this is definitely one of the better ones i would highly recommend this one and uh the previous one too definitely yeah so I guess that leaves us with the uh, Godzilla Final Wars, and oh, man. I okay. This one feels like a crazy anime movie. This this not straight a, up is just so anime. Yeah, and not in a good way though, because I personally don't think this movie's that great. Dude, I'm not a I fan. completely agree with you. Yeah, it's not yeah, good. It's, it's, it's so weird. I remember thank watching... you. I thought we were gonna have a big disagreement about no, this. I no, honestly oh don't. I'm not a big fan of this movie. It's uh, this was marketed as a final Toho movie, and really, I think it was meant to be the final Godzilla movie from Toho. And I think that they were gonna 
if it wasn't for the legendary Godzilla movie making a lot of money, I don't think that they would have returned to Godzilla. Yeah, they, um, there's a lot of uh, Super Saiyans. Uh, it's really interesting. Uh, yeah. I, just don't, I don't know. It's like okay. they just poured Dragon Ball Z into this movie. I know. It feels like Dragon Ball <laughs> Z Godzilla. And it's it's so, so like, I like corny, but this is so corny and so over the top that it's not even, I can't take it seriously at all. Like even as just a fun movie and it's, Okay, well, let's go over... Do you want to just get the bad things out of the way first, or do you want to go over the good things first? I guess we can go over the bad first, just to, yeah, to end it on a positive note. Uh, okay, yeah, that's what we usually yeah. do in the other reviews, too. So I guess bad things is the special effects are not good in this movie. Dude, they're CGI. so wacky. I'm like, yeah. it feels like I'm watching one of those sci-fi movies where the visual effects team is like, you got three days to work on this, and they're like, well, here we go. Here's the new Python film. <laughs> yeah um the the story is so close to being good that it's frustrating to watch because i'm just like it could have been good but you're trying to do too much other shit in the movie to really i don't know and it's i don't really i'm not a huge fan of all the characters and I don't like the way it's like really it tries to be super edgy it feels like incredibly edgy like the the way yeah. that Godzilla is brought out kind of like he was in many of the other Showa era specifically films where he's brought it it's kind of like King Kong versus Godzilla I think specifically where he comes out of the ice and they're like oh no it's Godzilla except that this one they kept him imprisoned in like an ice base okay that I actually like about this movie like maybe we can say that for the good things about the movie but yeah like I don't like the I, yeah I just I don't like the design I I like I the aliens special effects the aliens to me were they were okay but even then though like this movie feels a little bit too apocalyptic for me it's because it, there's so many it, it feels like there's way too many variables and and way too short of a movie where you have your Super Saiyan soldiers you have your Super Saiyan alien soldiers you have your regular soldiers. You have random local farmers that are taking Minya on a truck. You what the <laughs> hell is up with that dude, subplot? I, dude, I don't... And then, yeah, and then you have I, every single monster practically from, like, almost all of the films. And they're like, look, everyone's back. Now kill them all. And you're like, oh, God, here we go. Yeah, this movie is trying to remake Destroy All Monsters, but it's not very good at it. It's like, instead of Destroy All Monsters and you're getting this full-on fight, it feels like they're doing, like, vine length fights where you're like 15 seconds and something happens and you're like oh okay on to the next thing i guess pretty much i think the katango is such a stupid ship too there's no way in hell that that thing like okay i i i am i push my believability with science fiction so far i mean this is a movie about a giant radioactive dinosaur fighting a space dragon i could totally buy all that but the Katango, just the way the ship's designed, it's a flying submarine. That's so stupid. It, like, you know, when you put it that way, <laughs> yeah, no, it's a, it, it's it doesn't a make dumb any sense. Looking ship. The funny thing too, I just the, the one dude I love is the captain, who's like that Russian-looking dude with the mustache. Oh, that's a uh, god. What's his name? Uh, Don Fry. He's an MMA fighter. He. Oh. Uh, yeah, I've he had it with this giant lobster. We're gonna finish him off for good this yeah. time. I'm okay, like... I actually, I actually did like him. He's a, <laughs> He's a... he was a fighter in Japan, so a uh, pride fighter in Japan. So yeah, I, uh, I did enjoy his part of the movie. Um, but there's just too much. Go- it's trying to be Star Wars, The Matrix, and Godzilla at the same time, and it's just focus on Godzilla. You know, you don't need to do all the other crazy shit. You know, you don't need to put the Matrix storyline in there, too. You don't need to do all that. Like, it's just mutant humans. I was like, that's kind of stupid. Why is that in a Godzilla movie? And don't they just get mind controlled anyway? Pretty much. They're useless, except for the one main character. It's like, why not just make the one main character just have a special connection to Godzilla? You know, that would have been cool. You know, um... Or they could have just made, honestly, I'm going to be honest, I wish they just made any other Godzilla movie. I'm like, this this had to be this. 
this was supposed to be his last big hurrah. And I was just like, I remember as a kid feeling very like, like the scene where the guy's head splits in half and the aliens in there. I'm just like, that's just not something I would, I imagine seeing in a Godzilla movie. That's not something I imagine seeing. Yeah. In general. Yeah. Really? Um, Honestly. (laughs) Unless I'm watching like alien or invasion of the body snatchers or something. Yeah, I don't know. I just think, yeah, and then there's the whole truck thing and Minya, and they're like, oh, let's bring everyone loved Minya, right? And it's like you you literally brought you brought back the one we didn't want. You you didn't bring yeah. back the one we did like. And he just they there's like a farmer and his grandson that find him randomly. He's like, uh, oh, oh, what's going on? And they're like, uh, quick, put him in the truck, and they just take him. And then he stops Godzilla and the military from fighting or something. And he, oh, that's so dude, stupid when he puts up his arms and arms everything and to stop stuff. his. I'm just like stop! It's so the, stupid. The old the old dude's just like uh, Godzilla's angry because of what we did to him before, and uh, and it's all about vengeance now, and all that's and, in him is hate. That's fine. Go on more of that. Like if you're gonna do Godzilla's final movie, talk more about that. That the old man is like known Godzilla since he was a little kid, and like you know, I there's so fortunately many... he's telling it to his son. Godzilla's so he's telling it to Minya and I'm like why are you telling this this monster and this kid why, you, why he, you doing he doesn't it? understand he, he is, doesn't understand okay. anything you're saying sir it is hilarious though like I will if they played it more for laughs the Minya subplot like with him uh just sitting in the front seat of the car with uh with his seatbelt on with them that would have been if they did more of that I would have been okay with the Minya story line. he's just hitting the radio and stuff yeah like like it was funny with that stuff happening i was like okay but then again you're just like that's kid-friendly humor in a movie that's so bloody and violent yeah there's like super saiyans fighting over here man what do you what do you yeah there's a flying submarine shooting at aliens and there's future soldiers in the meantime in the same year then the same day this is happening there is a dude in a pickup truck well there's a flying submarine i'm just saying yeah i'm just saying and and there's a pimp in this movie the pimp and like the drunk guy okay you only see okay you i think you see like a couple black people in the movie but the only two black people that really have a big part in this movie are a stereotypical rapper type gangster and a drunk guy great representation there's the guy that's at the ice base guarding godzilla oh yeah that too okay he was good he was funny i like that guy (laughs) He was hilarious. Um, but the other guys, I was just like, that's so stupid. I don't know. It's well, just Zilla's like, in it. <laughs> yeah, Zilla's. Oh, my God, I forgot. Okay. I will say this, too, before we get on to the good things. They do so many of the monsters dirty in this movie. So many. Because they literally give them a 10. That's what I'm saying. Like, their monster fights are vines. They're just, like, 10 seconds, yeah. and they're done. They're done. It's no fun. And it's just... I don't know. The movie's just, it's so all over the place and so just not. It's a movie that I like watching the clips of, like the clips of the scenes that I like on YouTube. Mm. I, but I don't ever want to sit. It's just an unpleasant movie overall. It's not a very, the, the color palette's ugly. It's just not a very fun movie. I, I don't know. What, what feels weird to me too is it kind of, it kind of ruined some things for me. Like it gave some interesting monster designs that lately like they redesign Angiris, they redesign Rodan, they redesign uh, Gigan. Okay. I think we should bring that into the good things though, because I think all the monsters designs are just perfect in this movie. Yeah. They really do a good job with them. I guess the reason it doesn't work for me now is because uh, since that movie rubs me the wrong way so much, I kind of snub their designs with it where I'm like, I don't want that one now. It's part of that movie. <laughs> like that's kind of what it did for me, honestly, unfortunately. Uh, I see what you're saying. It didn't do that much for me. Cause like, I love this Godzilla design. It's a great Godzilla design. It's a perfect oh, yeah. blend of modern and uh, original. I think Gigan looks so cool in this movie it's the same mothra design in this movie as the last one as the last two movies and i think that this is also like the perfect blend of like classic and insect look um and we get anguirus in this movie which is sad not on his knees more yeah Yeah. (laughs) when you think about that and the realization in the earlier movies it's straight up a dude on his knees i know it's so stupid but 
I always wonder, it's like, why not just have him stand upright? Yeah, it's like, because even the monster is on his knees and you just kind of get confused. When you really look at it, you're like, wait a minute. And then, <laughs> but yeah, this one, it's actually straight up a four-legged animal that, or a four-legged monster that isn't bent or anything. It's just straight up like his full-on height and it works really well. Yeah. But I just, like I said, it's for me, I think it's, like I said, it's just they, if it wasn't this movie, I'd be even happier about them, which I still like them, but I'm just like, I just, ah, I, I don't, it, it's part of that. So I always just kind of turn my nose a bit, unfortunately. Yeah. It was nice to see the, what's his name? Uh, King the giant Caesar? spider. Oh, Kimonga? Yeah. Kumanga was nice. Oh my God. I forgot King Caesar's in this movie. Yeah. They take, so, I mean, mm. like this movie, you see Godzilla pretty much each monster you face, the aliens throw a monster at him each time and he usually kills that monster except for like yeah. a select few which like uh they have him face rodan and and king caesar at once because they sh- throw all his allies at him the ones everyone knows at least from the show era he was yeah. like friends with and and those they, are the ones that he usually lets live yeah he he lets all of them live to a point where they just honestly are playing soccer with them because yeah. King Caesar kicks Anguirus as a soccer ball at Godzilla and Godzilla goes to catch him like it's a net and he misses and it's a goal. I think, I think they scored on him. I'm pretty sure. So Godzilla may have lost. So stupid. Yeah. It's a, yeah. It, it's, um, it, and it sucks though, because, you know, I wanted to see him fight more of these monsters and everything, but the fights are just so quick and everything. It's just, I don't know. Um, I will say this though: the opening to this movie is great. Yeah, I'd agree. With really that. good. Yeah, it's uh, the opening credits, the fight in the Arctic is really good. All of that just perfect. Um, and then the movie starts after that. And then you're like, oh my god, this, uh, what's going on? Yeah, here? I, I remember seeing this as a little kid. You know, when it first came out, and I was so hyped and. You know, that opening was really good and everything. And then after that, I was just like, huh, this is, you know, they did the mutant human thing. And I was just like, this is kind of not Godzilla. And, you know, I did like the idea, though, that their last hope is Godzilla to defeat these monsters. And they have to go let him out and everything, which that's another great scene where they because it's I just wish we could have gotten him. So they go to the Arctic to let Godzilla out and Gigan follows them. They wake up Godzilla. He's pissed off. He's been in there forever and he fights Gigan, but the fight doesn't last. It doesn't. And he uh, and Gigan's got such a cool design. Chainsaw hands. He took away the hooks and gave him chainsaws. I was like, oh yeah, hmm. that's in the final fight. That's also awesome. Oh, it's so cool. I was so glad they brought Gigan back. And then I will admit they did a really good job with, king Ghidorah in this movie oh is uh what was his name kaiser Ghidorah? yeah this is a different design but you always wonder because king Ghidorah is like this movie sells and really plays up the fact that he is godzilla's ultimate enemy yeah and i mean they have two versions of him in this too it's like uh, kaiser Ghidorah and also uh monster x if i remember correctly which it felt weird because i kind of liked monster x and then it's like oh monster x was a red herring the whole time and you're like oh okay but i was actually okay with that though because i remember when i was watching it as a little kid i was so i was like okay where's king Ghidorah though because king Ghidorah is his ultimate nemesis and everything where is he i was like okay well we get this new monster and then he transforms into king Ghidorah. you're just like oh here we go and that part of the movie I did really like. Yeah. Uh, he, they, because didn't they, he, he's just visually, I won't, I don't want to give it away necessarily, but like when people watch it, you'll see that he is visually different. Like you see a lot, yeah. let's just say you see a lot more stuff going on there, I guess is the best word for it. Yeah. Uh, but he has yeah, four he, legs for some reason. Yeah. Pretty, yeah. That's pretty, yeah. He furnishes more legs. And I don't like that, but yeah. Did he have five heads or just three? No, he had three. He's still three? Okay. It looks just like it looks like King Ghidorah on steroids because there are pretty much different species of Ghidorah anyway in the yeah kind of the whole Godzilla universe. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just this movie's just too much of a mixed bag for me, and it's not something like I said. It's a movie that I definitely go and just watch the cool parts on YouTube. Yeah, I, I definitely would not recommend this to anybody. 
No, <laughs> unless they're too... like, I need to watch every Godzilla movie. Then I'm like, all right, go for yeah. it. This is honestly one of the ones I would not. I'm still honestly thinking back to this, like kind of shocked that this was that this is what we got from Toho yeah, when this they was were... their big end. Yeah, for their flagship character. And it's uh you know again, great monster designs, love them all. Uh there's some really cool scenes in this movie, but overall I just don't think the movie's that great. They do Ebra, they do Ebra or Ebira so dirty in this movie, yeah, the giant really monster. Pretty much. Yeah. I felt and so bad. They also then... uh it's funny too, because I mean like they, they really keep in mind the years like 54 2004 it's the 50th anniversary of godzilla when this comes out they're closing off after yeah. 50 years and then they come back at 60 really but um yeah i i would say guys if you do let's just say this if you watched all of the millennium era i would suggest just so you would end on a better note watch this movie before you watch both of the Kira movies and then finish off with Tokyo SOS. I think that would be a good finisher uh, for you if you did the Millennium Era. That's my only yeah. little uh, doctor's note there. Yeah, I wouldn't. I I agree. Um, it's. Uh, yeah, I'm still I'm glad we agreed on this one because yeah, I, no, uh, I, I actually don't know many people who even like this Godzilla movie that much or even put this in their top 10. The only one I, the most positive review I've heard of it was from James Rolfe, the angry video game nerd. And even he was just like, you kind of have to, I guess, accept certain things about the movie. Yeah. I think it's more so. I think people really like watching it. If they, they just want to see every monster on the screen. That's like the only thing that you can really uh, incentivize for people to watch it is that one aspect of it i'd say yeah pretty much um other than that though even the music's not good in this movie i didn't like the music it's they barely yeah. play the the original godzilla theme they yeah it's it's really not that memorable honestly yeah but anyways, guys, yeah, this one, uh, it's sad that the Millennium Era had to kind of end on this note. Um, it's kind of uh, just a meh movie, not very good. Um, don't watch it unless you absolutely want to. Yeah. For so sure. I, I think that wraps up the Millennium Era. So now all we got is the Rewa Era and then Godzilla vs. Kong. Yeah, it's going to be a... Oof, we're getting close, man. We're getting pretty close. And Rewa, at least, you know, we'll have a good... It should be an interesting time because it does feel much shorter, but also it's like a lot more. It's fresh. This is our. This is the current era we're in right now. This is like there is no finishing date. It's 2014 to like like still. It's like just as current, pretty much. Pretty much. Uh, yeah, because the Rewa era is still going. I think there there's another anime that's coming out. Um, we'll talk about that when the when we get to the next episode for sure. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I gotta finish watching that anime trilogy that came out on Netflix. Um, I watched the first one. Spoiler alert: I wasn't a huge fan. So I I got some good and bad things to say about it, but I think you may agree with me what I have to say. But I, I have some ideas of what it could have done better and uh the concepts they did have but that's uh, another story for next week or next time yeah so i guess uh we'll just wrap it up there then um anyways comrade where can we find you at you can find me at sutra side talk uh you can find that of course on most podcast platforms where we have multiple different shows there uh especially of course the cut of steel which danny's on in which we talk about dceu movies and usually each episode is a specific film where we'll go in depth on it, talking about what we uh, liked, didn't like, uh, what we would change personally. I also got Sutra Side Talk, a weekly uh, gaming movie TV show news podcast. Uh, Sutra Side Watch, a bi-weekly t- uh, movie analysis podcast. And then uh, up to it, down to it, a show I do with some friends from school where we'll go in on a specific topic and just uh, go off the rails on it. But of course, you can follow Sutra Side Talk on Twitter and Instagram at Sutra Side Talk. And you can follow me on Twitter at GoGoComzilla cool and uh guys be sure to check us out at www.thirdplanet.news you can also find us on youtube you can find the podcast on spotify google podcasts and apple podcasts and uh yeah be on the lookout for more cool content coming your way so anyways guys thanks for watching and we'll see you later so long